Hey there, MJ traders and investors. It's Rod with Pow Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, news, and interviews. Also, one of the best MJ community. Happy Friday. It's May 31st, the last day of the month. In this video, we're going to be discussing acreage holdings one day after Canopy earnings came out. Uh, they reported their Q1 2024 earnings, and it was less than awesome. They have the debt default that they announced, and that deficit was $775 million. So we're going to discuss all of that and more, and what are the implications for Canopy. Before we get to it, though, make sure to smash like. It helps support me in the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe, tick the bell, all that good stuff, and you'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. As always, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only, and you should never buy or sell anything based on anything that I write or anything that I say. Also, you can follow us over on X, formerly Twitter. The handle for that is at GroupPow. Going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward. And I also posted over there, California officials warned Jones Soda their hemp-based beverages are unsafe. They're psychedelic beverages. So that is uh, some bad news for them, but we'll see. I might do a video on that in the future here as well. But we'll dive into acreage. They reported their first quarter 2024 financial results, as I mentioned. We did have one analyst estimate. They were estimating, oh, that's not the right one. Let me bring it up here. So revenue was forecasted at 56 million, which basically was the same as 2023 Q1. So they were expecting it to be sort of on par, but not a lot of analyst coverage on this one. And it actually came in at 45.3 million. So a pretty big miss there. And it just continues to drop their their overall uh, revenue. So we'll go through this a little bit quicker. They had gross margins was negative 3%, excluding the impact of non-cash inventory adjustments. Q1 2024 adjusted gross margin was 31%. Net loss was 33.3 million and adjusted EBITDA was 2 million and adjusted EBITDA as a percentage of consolidated revenue was 4%. So they talk about different dispensaries. Obviously, they're going to be a big beneficiary of Ohio, so that couldn't be coming at a better time. And they launched the dispensary in Vernon, Connecticut, making its third hybrid dispensary in the state. Let's just go through. So yeah, botanist gummies in New Jersey. Yeah, this is, they, they definitely need rescheduling, removal of 280E. They definitely need Canopy to come in and Ohio and potential for Florida as well. But yeah, it's not looking, it's looking pretty bleak here in terms of acreage. So like I said, this all couldn't be happening at a better time. And um, actually Canopy is still working on getting Jetty, uh, Jetty and Juana finalized. Those are private companies and acreage is a public company. So they said that it's in the conference call yesterday. If you haven't seen my earnings review for Canopy yesterday, you can check that out. But essentially they discuss, you know, the, uh, the potential of those acquisitions and they said Jetty and Juan in the near term and acreage taking a little bit longer than normal, but they don't foresee any issues with that overall. Uh, but yeah, they ended the quarter Q1 2024 with only 7.3 million in cash and cash equivalents and 2.5 million of restricted cash with such funds restricted for use of only eligible capital expenditures, so CapEx. So the cash position is dwindling. Canopy mentioned that the Canopy USA is a pretty big cash position as well. They also have 17.5% uh, uh, stake in Terrasend. But yeah, this isn't looking good whatsoever. They also had, like I said, that deficit and default on their debt. So yeah, they did mention Ohio. I just want to bring that up here real quick before we jump into that next oops, next piece. So Mr. Curran, looking ahead, we anticipate transformational period for acreage as we gear for entry into the Can uh, Canopy USA ecosystem, coupled with adult use sales kicking off in Ohio. We are poised to seize significant growth opportunities by forging closer partnerships with industry leaders like Juana and Jetty, who are already in the process of integrating with Canopy USA. The imminent launch of adult use sales in Ohio will mark a pivotal milestone for acreage. With our enhanced cultivation and manufacturing operations and strong dispensary network, we stand uniquely positioned to cater to the Buckeye State's burgeoning market. We eagerly anticipate extending our full range of the botanist and superflux products to Ohio consumers, affirming our commitment to delivering high quality and diversified offerings. So uh, they, they really desperately need uh, removal of 280E and rescheduling and, uh, and this partnership with Canopy, in my opinion. And here's the article from Green Market Report. Like I said, not looking good. Acreage Holdings admits debt default amid falling revenues. The company also reported an eye-popping deficit of $775 million. He told investors that revenue fell 19% to $45.3 million in the first quarter, down from last year's $56 million for the same period, as I mentioned. 
Revenue also dropped 14% sequentially. The company attributed the decline to market price compression across various states, but also said the commencement of adult use sales in Connecticut could somewhat offset it. So, like I said, Ohio could be coming at a better time, rescheduling potentially before the elections. But, you know, overall, this is going to get, we have to remember what we learned in Canada. I mean, it's not comparing apples to apples, but there's going to be price wars. There's going to be, you know, the, the right now the average ounce in the U.S. is like 300 or $400 an ounce. Like that's not going to last forever, right? And eventually, like here in Canada, it's like $50 U.S. And you can get pretty decent quality for that, right? But there's no shortage of them for 100 and you can get quad A quality flour, right? So that isn't going to last forever. 280E will definitely help with margins and offset some of that price compression. But, you know, we really have to learn what we, don't forget what we learned here in Canada, because this is gonna, there's going to be a fierce competition in the U.S., especially when LPs go to the U.S. It's already happening. Canopy is becoming an MSO through Acreage, Jetty, and Wana. And then Cureleaf also acquired Northern Green Canada here in, in Canada. So, you know, we're already seeing LPs become MSOs and MSOs become LPs. So there's going to be fierce competition for these companies in the U.S. So just don't forget that. Can't stress that enough. But yeah, in their debt default, in addition to the company stating its filings, during the quarter, it was a default of the prime rate credit facilities due January 2026, and we know Canopy said they don't have any major debt due until March of 2026. The company said it received the default letter dated April 20th, 2024, containing allegations that there have been three events of the default concerning the credit agreement. So yeah, if you want to read this in its entirety, you can go ahead, but they did mention as well that they filed its earnings as a going concern. The company has accumulated deficit of an eye popping 775 million, and it said that it isn't sure it can make it another 12 months. And while it has to be put in, uh, in place plans to consolidate operations and cut expenses, it might not be enough. The company was going to sell its Ohio operations, but decided to keep it. So we'll see, this is not looking that great at all. We'll see what Canopy can do here, Canopy USA. But like I said, Ohio rescheduling and Canopy USA could not be coming at a better time acreage on the monthly time frame here you can see that this moves all coming off the low it's kind of similar to canopy except where we broke to a monthly higher high and broke resistance there at 51 cents hit 68 cents on this bounce but we still haven't confirmed a monthly uptrend we're no longer in a monthly downtrend with a break of that lower high lower low pattern but we still need the monthly higher low and higher high similar to canopy so if we bring up cgc here you can see that this moves all coming off the low but we're still in a monthly downtrend with lower highs and lower lows while a lot of mj you know especially usmj msos etf confirming a first ever monthly uptrend true leave uh, so you know there's a lot of names right now in monthly uptrends and cgc still in a monthly downtrend so at this point no monthly consolidation this month because today was the last day i said that at the beginning from the open of the candle right we would have had to pull back over 57 percent just to start monthly consolidation so just based on that that was a very slim chance of that happening right so now it's a monthly inside bar set up for another potential monthly inside bar into monday but more than likely going to see monthly consolidation in june so next month and then we'll look for a higher low somewhere around that, you know, low sevens, mid sixes, I would think. Maybe we get as low as $5, but if you're looking, I'm not telling you to buy, sell, or hold, but if you're looking, when would be a good idea, in my opinion, to add for long term, it would be somewhere on that monthly higher low around, you know, somewhere between that 7 and $5 mark. But as of right now, we're looking for that higher low to form over the next couple months. We know that I posted yesterday that the DEA official says that he believes that rescheduling could be approved and official before the elections, which it's it has to happen that way, in my opinion. Like I said, it's going to be Biden's political death sentence if he doesn't. And I'm from Canada, not to get political. I don't care who wins the race in the U.S. I'd rather neither, but um, I just want what's best for MJ. And what's looking like the most likely scenario is monthly consolidation into next month and then a potential for a monthly uptrend into July at the end of the comment period for rescheduling. July 22nd, there's like almost 10,000 comments now from the public so i would expect momentum to start to return into end of july and then into august most people are think it's you know it's going to be a summer lull drop off of an activity they'll probably be proven right for the first month or so and then i think we're going to kick into high gear into the end of the year and into the elections where it's going to be a big you know focus and like i said rescheduling florida on the ballot banking if we get rescheduling banking up listening to the nice in the nasdaq more than likely going to be a sure thing right so uh, obviously these numbers with acreage are atrocious and if it wasn't for canopy usa rescheduling ohio the company might not even be around for much longer but if there's anybody that can pull it off it's probably canopy and acreage through this partnership like I said, couldn't be coming at a better time. But let me know your thoughts and opinions on this in the comments section below. We'll continue the conversation there. It's Rod with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us in the pursuit of wealth. Hope you have a great weekend ahead, and we'll see you again on the next video.